Hi, this is Bill again. It is caring for a client with heart failure. Um, cardiac function, the heart. The heart is responsible for pumping blood throughout the body. Uh, the right side of the heart pumps it through the lungs and pumps deoxygenated blood. It's coming back from the body. The um, left side of the pump, or the heart, uh, pumps oxygen rich blood out into the systemic circulation. One of the things that it does uh, do is give the body nutrients, oxygen, cellular metabolism, and it also provides an el a mechanism to eliminate the carbon dioxide. Uh, the heart pumps about five liters of blood per minute and about 2,000 gallons of uh, blood a day. Heart failure is the inability of the heart to pump effectively um, for the blood to meet the body's uh, metabolic needs. A ejection fraction is, is estimated of the heart's efficiency. Normal ejection fraction is about 50, 50 to 60 percent of um, or more, up to 70 percent uh, of the blood that fills the left ventricle during diastole. Um, or about 60 to 90 milliliters of blood e with each beat. But when the heart develops congestion, congestive heart failure, the muscle, the heart muscle is not able to do its very, its job very well. Okay. Types of heart failure. We have acute heart failure, which is a sudden change in the heart's ability to contract, causing life th threatening symptoms and uh, pulmonary edema sometimes. Chronic heart failure is the heart's ability to pump effectively is gradually compromised. Impaired contractility remains prolonged. The American Heart Association and the uh, New York um, Cardiac Society have given it four stages of heart failure. Class one, a client that exhibits no clinical signs of with activity, does not cause fatigue, palpitations, or dyspnea, no limit to activity. Class two, the client has clinical manifestations with ordinary exertion, results in fatigue, heart palpitations, and dyspnea. Class three, the client displays clinical signs uh, with minimal exertion, less than ordinary activity, causing fatigue, heart palpitation, palpitations, sorry, and dyspnea. And then class four, the client shows signs of at rest. Discomfort is increased with any physical activity is undertaken. Uh, pathophysiology is that um, the inability of the heart muscle to contract, it can be caused by just about anything. Left side, usually a myocardial infarction, cardiomyopathy, or hypertension. Right sided, it's caused by, of course, left sided heart failure, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, left sided heart failure has hypertension, coronary heart disease, uh, i.e., angina, MI, valvular. Uh, disease such as mitral valve or aortic valve. Uh, Right-sided heart failure has left-sided uh, heart failure, of course, and then right ventricular uh, MI. Uh, pulmonary problems, okay, can also cause that. <clears throat> Left-sided heart failure, um, when left ventricles fails to fails the heart muscle cannot co uh, contract forcefully enough to expel the blood into the systemic cir circulation. Um, it also takes and uh, backs up into the pul pulmonary vascular bed. Fluid accumulates and creates congestion. Gas exchange is impaired. You get hypertension and intact arrhythmias and so on and so forth. Heart failure, renal failure, all that type of stuff. Um, afterload is the force that the ventricles must uh, overcome to empty, the, uh, empty its diastolic volume. Uh, increases with arterial hypertension, aortic stenosis, and pulmonary hypertension, or excessive blood volume. 
from renal failure. Uh, there is also uh, what they call high output fa heart failure, which increases the metabolic needs, can cause septicemia, which is a fever, uh, anemia, and hyperthyroidism. Left-sided heart failure will uh, have dyspnea, orthopnea, which is shortness of breath while lying down, and nocturnal dyspnea. Fatigue, displaced uh, apical pulse, and an S3 heart sound, which is called a gallop. Pulmonary congestion, crackles, cough, uh, frothy sputum uh, that can be uh, blood tinged and altered mental status. Manifestations of heart organ failure, such as oliguria, decreased urine flow. Uh, heart failure right-sided, it's a little bit different than the left-sided. Uh, the right-sided ventricle cannot forcefully contract and push the blood into the pulmonary artery, uh, which takes the blood from the heart and into the lungs, oxygenates it, and then gives it back to the heart. Uh, congestion of blood uh, and uh, backflow accumulates first in the right ventricle, then in the right atrium, and superior and inferior vena cava, and then the venous vasculature. Right-sided heart failure expected findings include jugular vein distension, ascending dependent edema, edema uh, ankles, legs, and sacrum, uh, abdominal distension, ascites, fatigue, weakness, nausea, anorexia, uh, polyuria at rest called nocturnal, nocturnal, <laughs> get that one wrong every time. Uh, lar liver enlargement and tenderness, hypo hepatomeglia, and weight gain. Okay. Heart failure, again, compens compensatory mechanisms, uh, reduced cardiac output, hypotension, low blood pressure, uh, stimulates the sympathetic nervous system to release catecholamines, which are never good for the uh, body to have. Uh, to raise the heart rate and blood pressure. Increased force and contractility of heart maintains the blood pressure but increases myocardial oxygen demand. Uh, epinephrine causes blood vessels to constrict. Uh, body shunts more blood to vital organs uh, of the brain, heart, and decrease, uh, decrease supply to the kidneys. Uh, assessment findings. Uh, Left-sided heart failure, you got hypoxia, us uh, unusual fatigue uh, with activity, exertional dyspnea, first, that's usually the first symptom of C uh, CHF, uh, and the rest of them you already have there. Assessment findings for right-sided heart failure, a gradual unexplained weight-dependent edema, um, ascites, hepatomeglia, like I said, and enlargement of abdominal organs, which leads to anorexia, accumulation of extra blood in the body, and that so that they, they that's the way it forces them to not feel hungry. Uh, diagnostic findings: left-sided heart failure. You have a chest X-ray, uh, cardiac enlargement, and fluid accumulating in the lungs. Echocardiogram: size of the left ventricle and ineffective pumping of the heart. Multiple uh, gated acquisition uh, scan, a MUGA scan, measures the decrease in the ejection fraction, ABGs, and arterial blood catheter. All right, question one. We have a elderly client who has had a myocardial infection, in, infarction on the right side of the heart. Um, which of the following signs should the nurse anticipate when assessing the heart value, uh, failure? Uh, a, B, C, or D? You guessed right if you said D. Edema in feet and legs, okay, because it's right-sided heart failure. Uh, diagnostic findings continued. Um, right-sided heart failure, chest radiography, EKG, uh, echocardiogram, lung scan and pulmonary and arteriogram. 
um, core pulmonal and liver enzymes. Okay. Medical management, uh, reduce the heart workload, improve uh, cardiac output, interventions, dietary modifications, low sodium diet, fluid restrictions, lifestyle changes, exercise, weight loss, cholesterol levels, <clears throat> drug therapy, digitalization, uh, acute heart failure, or pulmonary edema, pot uh, potent inotropic agents, dopamine, and Ent entropic uh, dobutamine or dobuta dobuterex uh, diuretic therapy Lasix furosemide uh, vasodilators ACE inhibitors captopril, capitin um, ramipril altase those are some of the medications that we use to help uh, control this uh, medical management continued. You have a cardiac resynchronization therapy, a CRT, restore synchrony of uh, the contractions of the right and left side. Uh, used primarily in clients whose heart failure is caused by a dilated cardiomyopathy. Interaortic balloon pump. This is something that is done. It's a temporary secondary uh, mechanical circulation pump that increases the blood flow back to the heart of the left ventricle. Which of the following clients um, teaching points should be included in a discharge summary uh, for a patient that has heart failure? Choose all that apply. Get used to choose all apply. You're going to have them for the rest of your life. Um, so A, B, C, or D, or is there another one? So it's A, weigh yourself daily and take your diuretics early in the morning. You don't want to take them at night because if you do take them at night, um, then you're going to be on the toilet all night long. Okay. Okay, surgical treatment for heart failure is a VAD, what we used to call a L LVAD, a left ventricular assist device. <clears throat> It is a it is used in cases of clients waiting for a heart transplant and is a mechanical device that uh, takes the place of the left ventricle. Usually, it gives it a rest until the heart transplant can be found. Okay. Um, another surgical treatment that they can do is surgical ventricular restoration (SV SVR). It decreases the size of the heart to the near normal size and shape. Uh, it's usually done in um, coordination with a um, bypass graft uh, of the arteries to provide enough good circulation to that area of the heart uh, so it works better. Uh, total artificial heart, uh, electrically pu powered pump that circulates blood uh, into the pulmonary artery and the aorta, replacing the function of both right and left ventricles. Not seen a whole lot these days. Uh, nursing management, medication teaching, lifestyle changes, diet restrictions. Uh, hospital setting, administer medication, monitor for therapeutic and adverse effects, monitor for signs of excessive fluid volume, evidence of a uh, electrolyte imbalance, uh, promote oxygenation, balance activities with rest, and support the family members. Okay. All right, question three. A client ha may be at risk for impaired gas exchange related to pulmonary congestion secondary to left ventricular dysfunction. A nursing intervention to assist client with uh, maintaining adequate gas exchange include all of the following except. So this is one that's not going to help. Okay, think about that. And it's D, providing foods and beverages that are a good source of potassium. All right. So those are what you're going to look for. <coughs> now then, cardiogenic pulmonary edema. 
pathophysiology left ventricle incapable of maintaining sufficient blood flow. Okay. Uh, sudden dyspnea, wheezing, orthopnea, restlessness, cough, pink frothy sputum, uh, cyanosis, tachycardia, severe apprehension. They feel like they're going to die. Uh, respiration sounds moist and gurgly. Uh, hypotension. Um, that's one of the things that you're going to see on a, a, a uh, patient with pulmonary edema. Uh, chest x-ray. Uh, uh, pulmonary infiltrates that will show on that. ABGs indicate a hypoxia uh, and hypercapnia and a pH uh, below 7.35. Uh, medical management uh, is supplemental oxygen or mechanical ventilation, drug therapy, uh, dopamine, dobutamine, uh, digitalis diuretics, nitrates such as nitroglycerin, ACE inhibitors, calcium channel blockers, and morphine. Um, Nursing management establishing an IV line immediately for medication administration, bedside EKG, monitoring, and pulse oximetry, automatic blood pressure cuff, and pulse measuring measurements. Uh, urinary catheter used to measure output and oxygenation frequently, um, frequent mouth care. Now, non cardiogenic pulmonary edema can occur due to. Um, acute glomerular nephritis and that uh, inhalation of irritating gases rapid administration of IV fluids and acute respiratory distress syndrome so that's where that's at then you have neurogenic pulmonary edema uh, older adults are at risk uh, increased risk for pulmonary edema it occurs related to a decreased cardiac output and heart failure. Uh, they are also at risk due to uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalance and IV infusions must be administered at a slower rate uh, to prevent circulatory overload. And that is it for today as far as the lecture goes, but you guys have plenty of other work to do. So good luck.